Hey, how's it going guys? It's just gone 5 o'clock p.m. here in the UK on Tuesday, 17th of May, 2022. So I hope everyone is well and uh, I hope trading is going well this week. There's been some nice opportunities on uh, the dollar, shorting the dollar actually, which Mark went through yesterday. So if you didn't catch that, um, there'll be a, a link somewhere at the end of this video. If you watch it, I'll link that video so you can have a little look at that. Um, but yeah, looking for more US dollar weakness moving forward. Uh, before we um, talk about some charts, I just want to bring over the uh, Forex factory calendar because we do have Fed Chair Powell speaking uh, at 7 p.m. UK time tonight. So that could shake up the markets a little bit. Uh, so just to warn you about that, but still looking for USD weakness, uh, looking for opportunities to sell the USD. Um, Silver is looking interesting to me because these moving averages have crossed here um, into a bullish order with price moving away from them. Um, now what I'll be looking for is price to interact with at least this eight moving average and then start to move away again and then looking for uh, buy opportunities, but on a smaller time frame. So you can see this basically is an uptrend on the four hour. Now we had it here, look where those moving averages crossed over into a bullish order. We had a pullback and we had a, a bullish candle here, but price never broke the high. So that was just basically a pullback on a, um, a smaller time frame or a bigger time frame, basically a pullback on the daily. And then we had this big bearish candle then, which kind of gave us a clue that uh, we were going to see more downside. It was heading into this kind of support area here, as you can see. Let me just kind of mark it out where we've got these wicks here. But then it wasn't until, you know, these candles here where we had a bearish close below and a bearish close below that we really got confirmation that we we're going to see more downside. So what I'm looking for anyway is price to pull back into these moving averages. And I want to see... Uh, price start to move away again but what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at it on a maybe a two hour or one hour time frame I'm going to be looking for moving averages here to be in agreement with these averages here so I've got my 8 my 20 my 50 and they're actually all in agreement here with these moving averages these are in a bullish order now these are in a bullish order looking for price to pull back here and i'm going to be looking for an opportunity on a smaller time frame to go along now i actually like uh price to also on a small a smaller time frame like the two hourly and the one hourly to interact at least with that 20 moving average so let's just say this downtrend here we can see um let's uh, let me just put a cross here on actually where price comes back into this uh 20 uh moving average here if you look to the left on my left chart you can actually see price is interacting with the eight moving average there okay but on the two hour time frame here it's interacting with the 20 moving average so we've got the moving averages on the four hour here bearish We've got the moving averages on the two hour are bearish as well. So they're in agreement and we've got price coming back into the 20 moving average and then forming a bearish pattern. Okay, you can see price moving into the average and then starting to move away again. Um, that's exactly what I'm going to be looking for here, but looking for buy opportunities. I want to see, uh, because this will be my execution time frame. I want to see price come and interact with that 20 moving average and I want to see a, a bullish um, pattern, morning star pattern, maybe a bullish engulfing candle, something like that, rejecting that 20 moving average or rejecting these moving averages. Ideally, then that will close bullish above the eight moving average. So this one's not ready yet. We could even form uh, inverse head and shoulder pattern. Looking at this, we've got a left shoulder here, um, head, right shoulder potentially could come down here to 21 22 um for those of you who don't know you know an inverse head and shoulder pattern i'll just draw it out for you um what do i want to use so the kind of textbook one would be like that okay it's a inverse head and shoulder pattern 
not too sure whether I said a head and shoulder pattern, but it's an inverse head and shoulder pattern. Left shoulder, head, right shoulder. It's basically a change of cycle. We've got a low, lower low, higher low. So we could be coming down here to form a higher low. Now, this right shoulder does not have to be in line with this left shoulder. It could be here, for instance, or here. Okay, so it could even be down here, as long as it doesn't break this low. So we're basically looking for the first higher low. So that's how I'm going to play this one, okay? I'm going to be uh, executing it on, I'll probably keep this two hour time frame on actually. Two hour time frame is not one that a lot of traders use, but um, yeah, have a little look at it, have a little play with the two hour time frame. And it's quite an interesting one. It produces some nice opportunities. When, when price is trending on the four hour, you know, you're dropping down um, to the two hour basically to, to get into um basically trading the the um the four hour time frame but a couple of hours a couple of time frames below um so most people go from you know four hour to one hour not a lot of people use the two hour time frame but i've started using it it's quite nice you can see the opportunities here look pulling back pulling back here there's actually a, an evening star pattern here if you saw below the low you wouldn't have got triggered in no problem and then you get another pullback and then you start to see, in fact, this one here, one, two, three. That's uh, evening star pattern there for me, interacting with the 20 moving average. That's also a bearish engulfing candle, interacting with the 20 moving average and rejecting. So yeah, have a little play with that. Um, it's something that I've been looking at myself, not uh, a chart, not a time frame, I should say, which I normally use, but it's looking quite interesting. You know, just trading that four hour time frame and then looking for, well, that's, well, I should say the, the four hour time frame bias or direction, but then moving down to the two hour as your execution time frame. So yeah, I'm gonna be looking at for longs on silver. Kiwi, I think Mark might have talked about silver, uh, about Kiwi uh, yesterday. Uh, apologies that I've got two different color schemes going on. Um, I like to mess with my color schemes. Um, Weekly, let's just have a little look at the weekly because weekly has come into big, big area. You can see this support here, support here, and again, you know, support 62.50. Um, already a nice weekly candle, three days to go though, so it could look totally different in theory. But you've got to have a little look at the gapping between where price is and, the, and this eight weekly moving average. So I can see this gap being filled somewhat um even you know maybe even come and test this low here which was actually support wasn't it on the weekly time frame um okay we could come and test that as well so yeah i mean from this particular zone you know we can see price can move quite a bit maybe even to 6700 or 67000 depending on how you want to read it so this looks really really interesting to me looking for longs on this now the four hour has uh, moving averages have crossed over. So again, you know, I could then use the four hour as my bias. Well, I'm using my weekly as my bias actually. I'm looking for longs. Uh, four hour moving moving averages have crossed over, which is great. Looking for price to pull back into the four hour moving averages. And then I can either use the four hour for one, two, or I can drop down like I was talking about on this on silver chart into like a two hour time frame for um a more kind of precise entry if you like now if you just want to use the four hour potentially i'll show you a little um technique if you like um for for trading a four hour time frame uh you can use this on a lot of time frames actually the higher the time frame the better though um but you know if you've got a nice clear um downtrend or an uptrend trending market what you could do is um, when price starts to pull back towards the moving averages, and this is a downtrend obviously, you can put uh, a sell stop underneath a bullish candle, okay? Because what you're doing is, price is pulling back into the averages, and then if you put a sell stop below a bullish candle in a downtrend, you're anticipating that when price impulses again, obviously to the downside in this case, you're gonna get triggered in. And in fact, a sell stop below this candle here and a stop above the high would have got triggered in and you would have made at least a one-to-one, -one, for instance. Um, 
I like to do that on a daily time frame actually. I wonder if we can show you an example on the daily time frame. Um, I mean, there was one actually. Moving averages had crossed over, they were bearish. Daily pullback, bear, uh, sell stop underneath, bearish candle, boom, you've got all this move. Look, bullish candle, sell stop underneath, boom, you got this move. Um, let's have a look here. Um, so we had, uh, let's see, I mean, the, sometimes it won't work because no trading strategy works all the time. Uh, but let's have a look. Let's. I'll try and find uh, one where you might have got stopped out as well. But here, bearish candle, buy stop above the high. That wouldn't have got triggered actually. This one, bearish candle, buy stop above the high. That would have got triggered. I'll just show you that. Actually, if I um, do that and buy stop above the high, stop below the low. Let's just say we went for a one-to-one -one minimum. Um, yeah, you do get triggered there. And boom, one-to-one. -one. Um, so yeah, it's a nice little kind of way to even, you know, if you've not got a lot of time, end of day trading, uh, look for a nice trending market. Obviously, this is a trending uh, market strategy. Okay, you're looking for basically a, a candle moving in the opposite direction or closing in the opposite direction to the, to the trend. So in an uptrend, you're looking for a bearish candle. In a downtrend, you're looking for a bullish candle that's coming into the moving averages, preferably. I mean, I don't know whether I would have taken that one actually in hindsight because it didn't actually interact with any of the moving averages. I would prefer it to at least interact with it, you know, at least this ain't moving average. But um, yeah, have a little play with that, you know, because in a trending market, it's a great entry technique. You know, another one here, look guys, I mean, bullish candle into the moving averages in a downtrend and then if you had a sold underneath there boom it's a very um very simple way of trading so if you haven't got a lot of time um you know you can do this on end of day charts daily charts but you know find something that's trending okay very very important it's not going to work in a ranging market so you want to see daily moving averages, you know, some nice um, angle separation. Okay, you want to see, you know, the separation between the moving averages, the, the bigger the separation, the, the better the trend, if you like, and the, 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 um, the more acute the angle, whether it's to the downside or to the upside, also the stronger the trend. We don't want to, we don't want to trend, uh, we don't want to trade markets where the moving averages are flat, for instance. So um, can you see this? The moving averages are bearish here, but look how flat they are compared to here, for instance. Okay, this I'd rather trade as a trending market. Here, there isn't really a trend; it's ranging. So, you know, you have to be aware of that as well. But yeah, um, great little uh, way of trading end of day uh, markets as long as they're trending. So, you know, take that information away. Um, back test it, have a little look at some charts, see what works, see what doesn't, and maybe you can um, write your own strategy based around that. Maybe you can make it a little bit more, um, put your own little rules in there, who knows. Uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely worthwhile having a look at that. So Kiwi, it is a bearish trend on the daily. However, we've come into this weekly support here, and you're always gonna see price start to reverse on the time frames on, on the smaller time frames first. Okay. So we haven't seen the um, the daily turn bullish, but we've seen the four hour turn bullish from weekly support, which is why looking to get to, into this one. Uh, you know, potentially if price was to come down here, who knows when Powell speaks later, who knows what's gonna happen. We might come and test 62.86. Nice little bit of support here, uh, resistance as well doesn't appear to have been retested so might be worthwhile guys just setting an alert down here and if price does come down into there uh, sorry about my emails guys I should have uh, switched those off uh, never mind um, but yeah um, nice little zone here. If it comes into this zone and we start to reject, we get a morning star pattern here, then that'd be absolutely fantastic. Um, Euro Swissy, um, 
well overextended from this eight moving average on the weekly. Um, nice little zone of resistance here. Look at this nice candle here at the moment. Again, still got three days to go, but anticipating some bearishness on dollar Swiss. Um, trying to break the trend line actually. Let's change a color scheme on this. I've got absolutely loads of color schemes. Um, now this little zone here, maybe even parity where one US dollar equals one Swiss franc, that might be tested again. Those moving averages have just crossed there, but there's some support there as well. We could come back, you can see I've got my alert here, we could come back, retest, reject. So I would be potentially looking for that evening star uh, price to pull back up here, evening star pattern on the four hourly, or even go into the two hourly. Uh, once price is up here looking for that evening star pattern, but this is in a great great area to start selling off and it looks like it might have done that um, You know if you miss this trade for instance, then we'll look for a break of this low and then another pullback as you can see when price was uh, bullish here, you know price falls back into the moving averages, you know, it doesn't just go straight uh, It's very rare a trend just kind of goes straight Um without having some decent pullbacks um, so yeah you know don't have a bit of FOMO fear of missing out just because you might miss this trade okay again you know look price let's uh, pick a there's quite a few trade setups here if I'm honest with you um, you know there's morning stars all over the place um, in this four hour movie can you imagine i mean this, this move just went on for ages and that was with uh really with dollar strength dollar just had this great great move and it just went on and on and on so you know even if you didn't trade this four hour um in fact let me just let me put the four hour on here okay and let me put the two hour on here just like i've done with silver um let's put my kind of intraday moving averages on so yeah you know you're looking for price to pull back into the moving averages and remember for me on a smaller time frame i'm looking for price to interact with the 20 moving average and potentially give me a morning star i mean there is one straight away so um here if you if i pull this over if you look on the left hand side we get price actually pulls back if you just look on the left price pulls back into the moving averages and then starts to move away again now if you look on the right this is the same section starts to pull back into the moving averages hits that 20 morning star pattern closing above the eight boom buy stop above that candle sell um stop loss below the low boom look at this move so you know use the higher time frame you know whether you're using the daily or whether you're using the four hour use use um a, f a time frame to give you your bias and the higher time frames to give you your bias then use the smaller time frames if you can not everyone can train um can trade the smaller time frames obviously which is why i've talked about that end of day strategy um but if you can use the smaller time frames use the bigger time frames as your bias use the smaller time frames to get into a you know a better entry um anything else I want to talk about I want to talk about euro yen actually um purely because those daily moving averages on euro yen have crossed over you know they were nice and bullish here um and now they've crossed over and price is uh, just come into that 20 moving average on the daily now for me in a trending market on the daily the kind of minimum I would expect or would look for is price to come and test the eight moving average okay before i'll be looking to trade it so all of this move here on this daily time frame you know i wouldn't I, there'd be nothing there for me it has to come in at least test that eight moving average now prices turned the, or the moving averages have turned bearish on this so um i'm kind of anticipating that this could be i can see it now high a low lower high lower low we've got a little bit of a downtrend going on haven't we it meets all the rules this could be forming a higher low sorry a lower high always get that wrong lower high don't know for sure but moving averages are bearish we've got this nice strong move down pull back so i am going to be looking on a smaller time frame for 
sellers to come in. Now more now interestingly as well on H4 depends how you want to draw this trend line. I've drawn it from here here, but potentially we've got a head and shoulder pattern where we've got a high higher high lower high so a, a, a left shoulder head right shoulder neckline break retest this is um almost setting up to be a you know a, a typical standard trade setup if you like uh, head and shoulder pattern you wait for a break of the neckline you look for a retest you look for a rejection and that's what we could be doing here i'm looking at this price action here as a Basically, it's called a bearish flag pattern. So after an impulse, you can see a bearish, after a, a down impulse, I should say, an impulse of selling, you can often see a bearish flag means it's a, basically a continuation pattern. It means basically we've corrected this move, this impulse down, we're in a correction, and we would expect price to move down again. So potentially you could look at if this if this candle turns bearish if this candle closes bearish i should say you could think about placing a sell stop underneath it trading it back down to the ctl and then moving your stop to break even maybe banking some money or if you want to play it really really safe i would look for a four hour bearish close below this counter trend line and that's potentially the next the start of the next impulse down because you're looking for you know this to happen you've got your impulse you've got your correction impulse correction and you're looking for that next impulse to start so if we have a nice bearish candle for our candle closing below that ctl then potentially you could look to place a sell stop underneath that candle anticipating that move down okay so you know, have your bias in mind, you know, know which direction you're looking to um, looking to trade and then use the smaller time frames to get into those trades. So I hope you found that useful, guys. A um, little bit of strategy talk there. Go away and back test what I've talked about. See what you think. Does it work for you? And uh, yeah. I will catch you again in the next video. And next time I will switch off my alerts, I promise. Take care, guys. Bye.